derivatives of trig functions. Up till now, we've looked at uh, the functions that we've looked at have been pretty standard stuff that you would, you know, look at polynomials, uh, linear functions, quadratics, other polynomials. But it's only been polynomials. We haven't really looked at. We've looked at a couple of rational functions. We looked at one over x. Looked at derivatives of that. But we've only done things where you could use your you could use your power rule, right? All we've done so far is things where you can find the, the derivative either by the definition or if you're using the shortcut where it says, as uh, my colleague who uh, is very quick at finding derivatives will say, no, you got to give me something x to the power of something, and it'll give you the uh, the derivative very quickly. We haven't done anything where you need any other ideas here. Like you can find the derivative of 20x to the seventh just by using that power rule, or uh, 3 sevenths x to the negative 2, or whatever. We're going to look at derivatives of trig functions here. This is an investigation. I would like you to sketch the, sketch the graph of sine x. Think about, you're going to graph the derivative of sine x by thinking about the slopes of this curve, the slopes at various points. Start by, if you have something here where the slope looks like it's positive 1, then graph that here. This is 1, so at that point, you know, the slope's positive 1. You're graphing the derivative here of this function, okay, and you're going to discover something. There's, sometimes we do things, investigations are for you to discover an idea for yourself. It's good if you don't shout it out and ruin it for everybody else, but you can feel free to talk to each other, okay, as you work through that, difficulty. If you're having difficulty, here's the first part. The graph of sine x starts there. At pi over two, it's at one. It looks like this to start with. No, it doesn't. That's a terrible drawing of it. It looks something like this to start with. I I can kind of tell a few points there where it seems like I know what the the slope is. What does it look like the slope is at this point right here? Zero. So then in the graph below, I know the derivative is going to be zero, right? So I'm going to put a dot at zero there. Okay? Derivative is zero at this point. The tangent is horizontal, so I'm graphing zero there. In black, here's a graph of sine x. All right? Graph of sine x. Starts at zero, maximum at one, back to zero, down to negative one, back up to zero, and it just keeps repeating every two pi. This dot is going to trace out the derivative, right? Because the slope here is one, right? So you see the slope of the curve. The slope of this curve is this value here. This point is at one because the slope is one at that point. Okay, so let's try this here. As we go along here, what's going to happen? Okay, it's, so this, what's happening to the slope as we go here? It's decreasing, right? So it's decreasing down to zero. zero at that point. So the red line is crossing zero. And then now it's negative, right? So the red line is below. And then it gets down to that point. That's the, that's the most negative the slope is going to be at that point. Now... The, the, the tangent is going to start turning around again here. Now it's going to be increasing again, right? Because it, and now it's, now it's positive again. That's where it was zero, so it hits zero, right? It was zero right here, and it's zero right there. So that's where it comes back up. And then it's, it's going to be, that's where it's, it's maximum, right? It's kind of turning. If you imagine that this is a road that you're driving down, that line, you're sort of turning to the left. And then that's, uh, now you, now the line kind of turns the other direction. Okay, now it's going back down again here. Zero again, we get the idea. And it's just going to keep repeating, right? Okay, it's uh, snapping to all these points, so it's not going to be a solid curve. But, <laughs> but that's, the, that's the curve that represents the derivative. What is that the graph of? Cosine. That is a graph of cosine of x, okay? Graph of cosine of x. So, well, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. You have this graph here. 
hopefully what you noticed is this graph is a graph of y equals cos x. y equals cos x is the derivative of y equals sine x. Cos x is a derivative of sine x. What would you predict then if we did the derivative of cos x? What would you predict it is? Okay, go through and uh, go through and figure it out. Okay, go through and figure it out. I'm gonna... Okay, what's the tangent of each of these as you look here? At this point, at that point, this is zero. So this is going to be zero. As you go to the right here, it's negative. It's going down. It's at its lowest point right there. This is negative one. Okay, that's the lowest that it gets. It's negative one. It's back up to zero at this point. And it's at positive one here. And then it's zero there. If you draw a graph of this, this is actually y equals negative sine x. Shh, guys, let's bring this back together here, please. Shh. This is negative sine x. Of course, you could define it as a translated sine graph. You could say it's sine x uh, minus pi, something like that. Or you could call it cos x um, plus pi over 2 or something like that. The simplest thing is to make it minus sine x because when you're writing derivatives, you don't want to start to create two terms uh, inside that function where you don't have to. This is the graph of minus sine x. Okay, so it doesn't work kind of in a nice parallel way. The derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is minus sine. Not not sine, it's derivative of minus sine. Well, if you started with sine and its derivative, if y is, well, we'll call it f. If f is sine, f prime is cos f double prime is, well, f triple prime is negative cos. And then the fourth derivative would be back to sine again. And it would keep going. Okay? It's not going to be the same as when you have, it's not going to be the same as when you have power functions. If you start with x to the fifth, you know, you get 5x to the fourth. If you're finding derivatives, and then 20x to the third, and 60x squared, and 120x, and 120, and then 0, and it's 0 after that forever, this is going to keep cycling around. You don't kind of get down to where the derivative is, where the derivatives become 0. For those ones, it's going to just keep cycling around. We're going to look at applications after for why that is. For now, I want you to be able to incorporate this in.